Let's bring in ABC's Catherine Falders along with ABC News political director Rick Klein for more on this. Catherine, the committee placed former President Trump at the center of what they call an attempted coup. So how do they plan to prove that throughout these hearings? Now look, the goal is to keep playing this uh, witness testimony, to keep showing documents that uh, the former president was told uh, multiple times that he did lose the election and that overturning or overthrowing the election uh, by way of former um, Vice President Mike Pence uh, just wasn't feasible. Now, look, I think last night you saw this focus on militia groups, the Oath Keepers, the Proud Boys, many of whom have been charged uh, with seditious conspiracy by the Justice Department. Uh, what will be interesting to see play out in these hearings is does the committee uh, pose and present this direct link between those militia groups and members of Trump's inner circle, whether it be on the outside, outside advisors, uh, or members of the White House. That uh, is what we're going to see uh, down the line. The committee hinted uh, that they do intend to do that uh, throughout these upcoming hearings. Now, Rick, Republican lawmakers have downplayed these hearings as an illegitimate investigation and partisan political theater. Do you think last night changed any minds? Uh, among the Republicans who said that, certainly not. And I'm curious to know how many people are tuning in thinking about this with an open mind. I think mostly what it did was refresh memories. There's been polling that suggests that people are less likely to blame Trump for the insurrection than they were in the immediate aftermath. I think that might begin to change as you start to accumulate the mass of the evidence here. And I was also struck by the way that, um, that this was about Trump primarily, but also about current political office holders on the Republican side. Liz Cheney um, dropping the revelation that there were Republican members of Congress who who asked for a pardon in the final days of the Trump White House, that would be at least a tacit admission that they knew something uh, that they were doing was, was not right. Uh, and of course, many of those people are still in office. Uh, many of the election deniers are, are running or are currently in office. And that's part of the threat that I think Liz Cheney and, and Chairman Betty Thompson were trying to highlight with the, with the weight of this testimony and video evidence. Catherine, the committee says several Republican congressmen sought presidential pardons for their roles in attempting to overturn the election. So how significant is that in this broader context? Well, uh, look, it would be very significant in, in the sense that many uh, of these Republicans, uh, whether they're the ones who are defying these subpoenas by the committee or meeting at the White House in the days leading up to January 6th, it would show, as Rick, as Rick said, that they did believe that they were participating uh, or doing something that was illegal in the days after uh, January 6th. You see, actually, those five members, including GOP leader uh, Kevin McCarthy, up on the screen right now, uh, the five of them have defied subpoenas from the committee. They essentially have called it a sham investigation. You see Scott Perry uh, right there. Now, Liz Cheney did uh, call Scott Perry out by name. She said that he was one of the members that sought uh, a pardon from the White House. Perry's uh, spokespeople are saying that that's not true. Uh, however, the chairman uh, of the committee says that the panel has documentation uh, that will show otherwise. Rick, Congresswoman Liz Cheney warned her Republican colleagues, saying, quote, there will come a day when Donald Trump is gone, but your dishonor will remain. What message is she trying to send there? I think that she is trying to say that they have the receipts, that they are able to prove the involvement of Republican members of Congress, uh, her own colleagues in the Republican conference, uh, and that the, the play for the the immediate term as well as the history books is one that is different than the one that they have decided to, 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 to put their lot in with. And I think that was a striking moment that I think speaks to the, the, the way that, that Congresswoman Cheney and many in the Republican Party are viewing this as a moment to try to reclaim the Republican Party. I don't think that it's going to change. Uh, the, the way that many of them stand, but I think it does alter the perspective to, again, put this in the, in the context of that day, how horrible it was. So many of those members who now explain or excuse or justify what happened on January 6th were themselves horrified, uh, up to and including uh, Congressman McCarthy, the Republican leader, who might be the next Speaker of the House. I think that was a, a shot across their bow about what else the committee knows and about what else is going to be uh, learned and said about the, the events of January 6th in the weeks ahead. And Catherine, we heard Attorney General Bill Barr say that he repeatedly told former President Trump that there was no evidence of meaningful fraud in the election, and Ivanka Trump said she accepted that. So why is it important to prove that former President Trump knew he lost the election? And it wasn't only the former Attorney General Bill Barr. You mentioned the other witness uh, testimony. But look, just 
days, about three or four days uh, after January 6th, we reported that uh, the former White House counsel, Pat Cipollone, was uh, advising Trump that he could face uh, some civil or legal liability associated with uh, asking his supporters uh, to storm the Capitol. So it's important in terms of the timeline uh, for the committee to show uh, that it was obvious this was happening in the lead up to January 6th when Trump was trying to use the powers of his Department of Justice uh, to ask states, for example, uh, to convene a legislative session to overturn the results in their states, uh, that that was happening after the election. And then, of course, leading up to January 6th and even after uh, January 6th, the committee uh, is showing uh, that the Trump lawyers were willing to go beyond the courts, that they were trying to put this plan into action that they knew that was completely false. They knew it was false. They have documentation and they have emails uh, to that effect uh, from these lawyers that they will present uh, during the course of these hearings. All right, Catherine Falders, Rick Klein, thank you both. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel and don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.